I'll be honest, I was a bit disappointed when the line came out and his guard was just a standard blade guard veteran. No fancy dark angels, iconography, no hooded figures, no swords, only these stupid flaps on the legs. So after I got rid of them and cleaned out the sides of the armor, I also scraped away the nipple where the holes is supposed to go on. The truth is, apart from these few details, I really like these models. Their stoic stance and aesthetic tells me they're truly battle-hardened veterans, not easily rattled even by the most overwhelming enemy onslaught. I got rid of the trims on the shoulder guard because I always work heavily with decals, and I just really like the way plain shoulder guards look on Space Marines. I was going through my Dark Angels boxes, starting with Wrath of the Soul Forge King, and as far back as Dark Vengeance, in search of hooded heads. But no luck. I don't even know if I used all of them, or if there simply weren't any to begin with. There are, of course, the Deathwing Knights, but uh, the heads are made for terminate armor, and some of them are plain stupid. Brother, turn the lights back on, will you? Fine. <laughs> I'll do it myself. I took some epoxy clay, might go to his magic sculpt, but you can use whatever works for you. Rolled it out on a sheet of glass, and making sure it's wet so nothing sticks, I created a thin sheet. Whatever clay you're using, you'll probably want to have it cure for a bit so you don't rip it. And then I cut it into a more suitable size and lifted it off the glass plate. I'd rather have some excess that I can cut away later than not having enough. After checking how much I really needed and cutting it down even more, I created the shape of the hood in the front using my color shaper. And after that, I made sure it looked more like a hood by sculpting some folds and adding some volume in the back. I try to really push YouTube content lately, but there's a huge elephant in the room. On average, only 20% or less of a video I release gets watched, and I think this hurts the channel growth massively, as YouTube understandably does not recommend videos that have low viewer retention. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll have to fix this if I want to be able to continue doing YouTube. So I'll try to cut down on the fluff a lot for a while and see if it helps, and I'll also have to edit the painting segments a bit tighter. If you want to see anything I paint here in more detail, with more instructions, then you can join the Patreon to see the full-length tutorials. I already put them there, just follow the link in the description. I apply the layer of flavor on flesh with the airbrush to speed things up. Of course you can use a brush, but then it's probably better to prime the miniature white. The blade guard is formed by first company veterans, Deathwing in this case, and that's why I put the wings and the sword on the right shoulder, even though usually it's on the left for blade guard. My viewers helped me with what to put on the other shoulder during one of my live streams. They're inner circle veterans, they may use the crux. Okay, yeah, we'll probably do that. So I leaned into the former Terminator Marine narrative and put a crux on the other shoulder. I wanted to add some additional detail, so I cut away the skull from these laurels and added them on top of the crux. I really like how this makes it look even more like the heraldry of a veteran. Once everything was in place, I used a little microsole to smooth out the decals and make them conform to the round shape better. And then I added a layer of matte varnish, which equals out the surfaces and gets rid of the edges of the decals where pigment could accumulate and ruin the effect. It's time to add some battle damage. I loaded a sponge with flayed one flesh and got rid of most of the color until it left the pattern I was happy with. I connect a few of these chips with a brush for more intriguing patterns, but you can of course skip this if you're in a rush. I also make some of these scratches longer, and all of this pays off later when everything comes together. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. My approach for shading bone armor hasn't changed much over the years. I generally mix a sepia wash and a bit of yellow brown. That way I can retain the property of a wash while slightly modulating the color more towards the final result I want. And as you can see, I throw the wash all over to cover all recesses and I'm directing the pigment towards areas that I want more shaded. The first layer creates a nice subtle shade and you could just leave it like this if you want. I know that some people prefer this look because it's relatively smooth and brighter overall. Personally, I want to add more contrast and since I'm aiming for a grimdark result, I also don't mind if the result is a bit rougher. Washes are a super effective means to create quick gradients if you babysit the pigments a bit towards areas you want shaded. I'm repeating the steps for the whole mini until I'm happy with the intensity and placement of shades. Wherever I want highlights, I leave the flayed one flesh more or less untouched. 
You can see that on the shoulders, for example. I'm cleaning up all the edges with flayed bone flesh to add back some contrast and definition, but this also serves as a base for the weathering and chipping later. I don't want to spend a lot of time defining the lower edges of the chipping like you would on a showcase mini, and this bright edge highlight will achieve a similar effect much quicker. Grimdark to me is not about one particular technique or product, and definitely not about always doing the same thing. It's about a certain feeling to the result, and there's many ways to get there. I get many requests for recipes for particular chapters because of my Grimdark Blood Angels and Ultramarine videos, and some of you probably expected a similar recipe for this. And sure, you can apply a bone color over a dark base coat with a sponge like this, highlight it up, and so on. But I don't really like the look. The step up in value of the color is too big, and you probably could make it work, but it would involve mixing a lot more in between layers than I want to. The technique just doesn't fit the outcome I want. That means I have to adapt the technique. And overall, I just like the more controlled look a bit better in this case. Just like with my Grimdark Imperial Fists, I think bright colors do benefit from this approach a lot more. And you can still add some structure with stippling or sponging at the highlight stage over the washes if you want more structure to show. I know it would be way Way easier to just tell you the same technique over and over in these videos but I want you to see that there are many approaches and that you can pick whatever works for you from this arsenal that we have at our disposal. If there's anything that I want to sell you is the tools to create your own vision and not someone else's. Next up I added dark chipping with charcoal which dries super matte and that helps a lot with selling the effect. Again, you can go more subtle than this, but I'm leaning into a more heavy weathering with the Grimdark series. I'm focusing on the edges, which are usually areas that receive more wear, and I don't mind if the sponge creates some heavier chunks now and then. It all just fits into the narrative. And because the sponge is not the most precise tool, I add some additional wear on the edges with the brush. Again, I'm just showing you options here. You can totally skip this if you want quicker results. I based all the parts I wanted metallic and dark aluminium. I wanted the dark angel screen in the scheme somewhere, but I didn't want to make the eagle just green. So I added washes of contrast to retain some of the metallic shine. I never did this before, so I started with a diluted wash and ultimately had to add a second layer. And I dabbed on a bit of pure contrast paint in these deepest recesses to make them even darker. To add some contrast and to tie the eagle together with the armor, I gave the chest eagle a wash of Mornfang brown and then a more confined wash of scrag brown. This adds a nice dusty residue effect on the recesses and makes the green a little more interesting. The parts I washed with contrast paint lacked a bit of shine, so I mixed white aluminium with yellow contrast paint and brought back some of these reflective highlights on the green. You can see how the highlight starts looking yellow because of this, which is a great fit for the green I think. I wanted a very particular muted green for the robes and I used the base color of Dark Angel Green Contrast Paint mixed with graphite over the white base coat on the tabard and the hood. I mixed in a bit of Sybarite Green and started to apply highlights. And I wanted all the cloth parts to be heavily textured so I opted for stippling. I spent a bit of extra time on getting the dots as evenly as possible. But the good thing with stippling is it will usually look good even if done faster. The further down on the tabard, the more I leave the shade color visible, and the further up, like on the top of the hood, I make sure the highlight layer is more consistent, so it's a solid base for the next highlight layer. Wherever I do this, everything appears brighter overall. And as I mix in more Sybarite Green, I repeat the same principle. To draw it all together, I gave everything a quick wash of the base color and then added some purple to add color variety. I made sure the shadows received the thicker layer and went for a more glaze consistency over the highlights. I like how this added a subtle yet impactful color shift. Using the typical red and white colors, I added some personal heraldry to the shield on the chest. I split it roughly in half with a diagonal line and added a bit of battle damage in edge wear. And then placed a decal in each of the halves. 
I also banged that up a little before adding some discoloration with burnt sienna and burnt armor washes. I painted the sheath of the sword green, shaded it with burnt umber towards the upper edge, and added highlights with brush, sponge for some irregularities, and a scratch here and there. I thought about using Deathwing Knight Shields for that extra angel's iconography, but instead I thought I'd get rid of the Indominus icons and start from a plain shield that I could plaster with freehands. So I was smoothing the surface with sandpaper and filling a few dents caused by the sculpt that ran too deep. And since every video needs a good montage, here's one about how I painted the shield. I gave the bolt a casing a layer of scarlet blood and started washing it with burnt umber towards the front to get some variety within the red. And if you were wondering why my inks are drying matte, that's because I added some AK Ultra Matte varnish. After I brought back some brighter red on the adjacent areas, I added additional detail to the dark parts by sponging on imperfections and then added highlights with more and more Luganath orange mixed in. I wanted the skin to be rather pale and applied a base coat of warm grey to the face and then added a bit of scrag brown to the mix as a shade, mainly under the cheekbones and the eye sockets. This adds depth and some semblance of a person that is alive, even if the skin tone is rather pale. I'm also defining parts of the forehead with this mix. I'm painting the beard grey and also add some darker flesh tone to the lips. At that point, I'm also adding more and more ice yellow to the skin color and highlight up the features of the face. And I'm also highlighting the beard with ice yellow to keep the light consistent. I added a few dark brush strokes for eyebrows and then I used an almost black to paint the pupil and call the face done. Before I put in the finishing touches, I noticed that the tabard lacked a bit of detail in the lower area, so I highlighted the outline with a blue-gray and added some random imperfections, followed by some horizontal lines to make it look more like a torn fabric. I quickly threw together a simple base and painted it up with a base layer, dry brushed highlights and a wash. And then I added two colors of pigment with a soft brush, spread them out and mixed them at the same time for some variety. I also touched the feet up a bit with the dust, which is pretty effective to show that your marine was existing in this environment for a while. As always, painting the black trim wraps up the mini and we can pan over to the final result. It was a lot of fun painting bone armor again, this time in the grimdark style. And remember, grimdark is about a result that gives you the feeling of a gritty existence and a universe worn down by constant conflict and struggle, and not about a single technique. Because a technique might not be appropriate when the premise changes, in this case working with a bright armor instead of dark tones, and sometimes that means having to adapt the approach to the desired outcome and not trying to force an outcome with an approach that might not be able to produce the result you want. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. 
If you enjoyed it, giving it a thumbs up supports the channel massively. And if you want to help keeping the channel running, any support on Patreon goes a long way. And remember, there's about 90 minutes more educational material about this figure, as well as hundreds of instructional painting videos on there too. We also have a Discord community where you can get feedback and general painting advice. These guys already are supporting on Patreon and are the true heroes of this channel, as it wouldn't exist anymore without them. Thank you all so much for that. Keep pushing that pigment, and don't be afraid, it's only paint.